Please turn your attention to the word provided by Dr. King. Thank you, Jesus. There is more that I require of thee. Hmm. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, Lord, that you're requiring more from us. Help us, Lord, to learn how to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, we yield. It is a winless fight to keep wrestling with God. You cannot win a wrestling match with God. So we learn how to say, yes, Lord. Yes to your word. Whatever it's saying to me, yes, Lord. Yes to your will, whatever direction that you would have me to go. And so, Lord, we come this morning yielding our hearts, our minds, our souls, that you can have your way for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Just a couple of scriptures in the book of Matthew. The fifth chapter, verse 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill, cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lampstand and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. We thank God for Jesus and for the word of God. I'm going to pull out my iPad. It has a little bigger font. For some of you who are my age, you understand what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. When I was just a little fella, there was a song that, uh, we were taught vacation Bible school or Sunday school or whatever it was. It was for children. And some of you know it. Um, I'm going to sing. We've been just singing a lot on today. But uh, thank the Lord. Maybe that's just what we needed. But this is a song that when I was just a little, little fella, and I'm going to ask because I play a saxophone better than I sing. My father is the singer in the house, but it goes like this. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it, let it shine, let it shine, and let it shine. Verse 2, everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Verse 3. Jesus gave it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Put your hands together. 
Jesus gave it to me and I'm gonna let it shine Jesus gave it to me and I'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it one more time this little light of mine oh this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine let it shine let it shine let it shine this song often is mistakenly believed to have been sung on plantations during slavery but it was originally written by Harry Dixon Lowe's around 1920 as a children's song. But during the Civil Rights Movement, Zelfia Horton adopted the song and taught it to Pete Seeger, Steger. The song is famously tied to the civil rights leader Fanny, Fanny Lou Hamer while being detained by police on her way back from attempting to register to vote. Mm. With other members of her community, she began singing this little light of mine. Ah, amen. Well, we sing it, and I believe the Lord wants us to let our little light shine. Amen? Amen. Jesus has been busy. Um, let me just, before I, uh, I'm going to tie in another thing we've been talking about for this month, sowing and reaping. And the sermon topic is sowing light and good works. It glorifies the Father. Sowing light and good works, it glorifies the Father. Let me just give you three principles of sowing and reaping and then get into where I want to be on today as far as the text, and we'll bring them all together, we pray. Sowing and reaping is a law of the natural world. And so uh, if you sow weeds, you're going to get weeds. Um, my wife tickles me. She has uh, really uh, adjusted or changed. When we first got married, I used to tell her, look at those weeds in the grass. I was very particular about what our grass looked like. So we would weed and feed it regularly. Uh, we would pull up weeds. I, I hated to see weeds between rocks. And uh, I liked to see the lawn well manicured. manicured. Um, and uh, my wife says to me, honey, is that all, is that the, the the greatest thing that uh, you all are concerned about is the manicuring of the lawn. Well, now, guess who looks at the manicuring of the lawn? <laughs> <laughs> who looks at the plants, and she? we walk out the back door, and she'll even talk to them. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> I don't think, I asked her, I said, do you have names for them yet? She said, no. But uh, what you sow, if you sow a rose bush, you're going to get a rose bush. If you sow uh, dandelions, and you know how you can sow dandelions, by not treating them and letting them puff, and their seeds will go all which way. And so if you sow dandelions, you're going to get what? So sowing and reaping is a law of the natural world. Whether a person believes in it or not, they will feel the effects of it. Uh, one brother <clears throat> uh, said, one preacher, as he was preaching, he said, there's enough trouble in his life uh, that he has to deal with, and he de therefore does not intentionally try to sow any trouble in another person's life. What he tries to do is to bless. And so uh, let me just tell you that sowing and reaping is also a law in the spiritual world. That's point number two. So it's a, 
law in the natural world, but it's a law in the spiritual world. And so if you uh, sow negative seeds, seeds of criticism uh, or a lack of mercy or a lack of graciousness or lack of concern, uh, when it's your time where you need help, guess what? You will get what you sow. You will reap what you sow. And there's a third principle. There's a host of principles, but three that I wanted to highlight is we will reap more, not just what we sowed, but more than what we have sown. And so uh, when you're looking at uh, some fruit, or I, I, what I love is, and it's become a, a, a specialty in our house, I love frozen grapes, whether they're red or, or uh, green. Uh, you take those things, you clean them off, rinse them, put them in a small little baggie, and put them in the freezer, and you don't have to worry about freezer burn or anything like that. And when you're ready, you pull those out, and they're like candy. Oh, but uh, where was I? I'm, okay, I digress. <laughs> Uh, but what happens is there might be a seed or two uh, in the grape, but it comes back in bushels. And so you're going to reap more than you have sown. And so here in the text, uh, there's a host of things that Jesus has done. Jesus has been out and about and healing, delivering, setting free multitudes of individuals and he has their attention. And he wants to preach now because he's not here just to heal. He's here to reconcile and to pay a price that God has exacted because of sin. Because of sin, the wages of sin is death. And God wanted one that was sinless to come before him and take on the penalty of death. And so initially it started out with animal sacrifices. And do you know why uh, it was animal sacrifices? The reason being is you cannot associate or attach a sin nature to an animal. So an animal was the closest to being sinless as could be until Christ came who was sinless. But God wanted a perfect sacrifice and so Jesus became that. Jesus came down to pay the penalty of sin, which was death, to defeat death, to rise again, to allow us to be reconciled if we wanted to with the Father through Jesus Christ. There's no other way for us to be reconciled to God. Jesus says there's no way but his way. No man can come to the Father but by him. And so th why is that important? Uh, one, we're living in a society that allows you to talk about your spirituality. They don't mind you being spiritual. They don't mind you talking about God. But if you start lifting up the name of Jesus, see, that, that's what, what all you're doing, with all we're going through, it doesn't matter if you don't have Jesus in your heart. If you don't love Jesus and has been have accepted him as Lord and Savior because there's nothing cheap about grace. He doesn't want to just be your Savior where he saves you from hell. And then you say, God, thank you, Jesus. I'm, I don't have to worry about hell now because I've accepted Jesus as my, my Savior. Jesus says, no, there's no cheap grace. I am not just your Savior, but I am your Lord and Savior. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. And, and why is that important is because the world is trying to get us to have dialogue without lifting up the name of Jesus. When you lift up the name of Jesus, you're being argumentative. When you lift, lift up the name of Jesus, then you're looking for a fight. Uh, why? Because the devil doesn't want to, uh, uh, for you to lift up the name of Jesus. He doesn't want you to lift up Jesus at all. He wants you to go to hell. He has come, devil, what are you doing? I'm going about to look, seeking to, who to kill, steal, and destroy. And so Jesus pulls the, these, this multitude together. You'll see it in the end of the fourth chapter. And he wants, however, to give them a message on what it means to be happy. Anybody happy here today? 
Okay, maybe that wasn't the right question to ask. Anybody have anything to be unhappy about today? Well, it got quiet because some had to think about that. Yeah, I'm not happy about the coronavirus. I'm not happy about the way people treat one another. I'm not happy about division. I'm not happy about the way uh, many of our children are being raised. I'm not happy about how marriages are going. There's a lot of things I'm not happy about. Jesus says, listen, for those who are part of the kingdom of heaven, there is a different set of principles and rules that you are to live by. If you live by these rules, you will be happy. And we call them the Beatitudes. It starts in verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Now, these are the individuals he had healed who wanted to know more about, you've healed me, you've delivered me, I was vexed with an evil spirit, and now you're telling me about happiness, blessed. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, Wow. And say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. Not necessarily down here. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And then Jesus to give you an illustration to help you understand those, because sometimes when you're just giving people information, uh, it goes right over their head. So Jesus, being a master teacher, wanted them to get the point, and so he's letting them know, because you are following me, because you are following my voice and my will, my directives, and if you follow those things that would make you happy, he says in verse 13, you're the salt of the earth. What is he saying in essence? You are precious. You are almost, uh, there's, there's no estimate, there's no price. You're, you're priceless. And so whenever someone says to you, you're the salt of the earth, they're saying you are precious. You are worth, worthy of honor. You are special. You are unique. You are to be cherished. You are the salt of the earth. Maybe sometimes we need to do that when we see people and we want to acknowledge how much we appreciate them. You know what, brother or sister, you're the salt of the earth. Come on, give the Lord a praise. But if the salt loses its saltiness, you're nothing, wor you're worse than gravel. You are of no use. You, 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 listen, if you've lost your saltiness, all you are is a collection of dirt and dust to be thrown out and trampled, you'll be a good sidewalk. We, we. But that's not where I want to linger in, in these last few minutes. But Jesus is warning us, listen, don't lose your saltiness. Tell your neighbor, don't lose your saltiness. Tell your neighbor on the other side, be salty, be salty, be salty, be salty. Be salty. All right, so you've got that point. Don't be useless. But verses 14 through 16, and I'll be finished. He says, you are the light of the world. Stop for just a second. He says, you are, not you shall be 
or one day it'll be you, you take some classes, you come to church. But because you have been following Jesus Christ, there's several things about you. You are right now in possession of that which will shed light and it'll cut through the darkness, through the dimness, through the lack of vision. Your light, let your light so shine before men. Let me, I'm jumping ahead. But you are the light of the world. You've got value. He started with the salt because you've got the answer. The world is walking around in darkness. They're, and how do I know? Because the, why is there so much division? Because they're bumping into each other and don't have a clear sense of direction. And so if somebody keeps bumping into me, what am I going to do? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a salty brother, so... I'll say, please excuse me, you sir, ma'am, you keep bumping into me. But, but, but you ever walk downtown and somebody bumps into you, and, and what do you say? You could at least say it, excuse me. <laughs> but you are right now the light of the world. Why are we the light? Because in John 18 and 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And so the light of the world, which is Christ, abides in us. And that makes us able to be right now effective. So when you just get saved and somebody uh, is looking for uh, help, maybe, maybe they're feeling ill, you can because you are right now light. You can say, listen, I don't have a whole lot of money or whatever the doctors are saying about you. I don't know all the, the, the particulars, but such as I have, I give to you in the name of Jesus. When was the last time you prayed for somebody and not yourself? and believe God that God would intervene in a divine way. They needed an answer because they were in darkness. They didn't know. They couldn't see what was before them. They couldn't see the cost. They couldn't afford the cost. They couldn't uh, understand and make sense out of the direction that the doctors were giving. But uh, what happens is you came along, and in your simple way, because you are the light, because the light abides inside of you. And you said, listen, I'm not professing to know everything about or anything about, but I know this much that if I call on the name of Jesus, call on the name of Jesus. There's people that will uh, approach me uh, and, and ask, they'll want to tell me the things that are, they're wrestling with, they're struggling with. And it, sometimes it seems so complicated, so much. And the Lord would just impress upon me, you don't have to have an answer, son. That No, I am the answer. Tell them, uh, ask them if, I can, if you can pray for them. And so what I find myself doing more often than not is praying for people. And sometimes I, I, I might have missed the opportunity to lay hands on them, but in my prayer time, Thank the Lord. I can call their name out and their situation as best as I know and ask God to move on their behalf. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. If the Christ is in you, Christ is going to work for you and work through you if Christ is in you because you are the light. He says, verse 15, we're about finished. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a lamp stand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. So it's this effectiveness of the light. You, you are right now the image or the reflection of Christ which makes you effective. Verse 16, so let, let your light so shine. We, we, can, we can hinder it. Let me give you four points, and then we'll be just about out of here. Four points of how we can let our light shine. One point, verse number one, or I should say point number one is examine your heart. You cannot be both dark and light at the same time. 
the heart sometimes, what the Bible says, is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And so that's why God, when he was saying how you ought to love him, he said in Matthew 22 and, and 36 through 40, to love him with our heart, mind, soul, heart. He starts out, love him with your heart. This is, a, this is about relationship. So examine your heart. Is it light because you're in love with the people of God or, uh, and you're in love with people, you're in love with the world? Or is it dark? Point number two, be authentic. What do I mean by that? Don't, don't, don't go around uh, acting like you you came out of the womb saved. <laughs> you know, d don't don't act like you never failed. Don't 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 do that. Be be real. Listen, I have failed and fallen, but the Lord gave me the strength. I got up and I'm walking straight. And all glory be to God. <laughs> to God be the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Church, you all might even have to excuse me. I might have to shout a little bit. Because I'm glad about the goodness of the Lord. I'm glad about his favor. I'm glad about his goodness and his mercy, his favor. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. If it had not been for Jesus, hallelujah, glory to God. I don't know where I would, I would have been dead and gone, but thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. And he's a God of not just one chance and second chances, but third and fourth. Lord, I thank the Lord for Jesus. I thank the Lord for Jesus. My band. See, I could have used right there, boom. I thank the Lord for Jesus. You all say, what in the world? But, but listen, when I think about his goodness and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Be authentic. Be real. Point number three, encourage others. Ah, sometimes we... That, that bashfulness will try to come out or shyness will come out or nervousness will try to come out or uh, just being insecure. The devil will try to give you a lie and see if you'll catch it. Anything that the devil throws, don't even try to catch it and throw it back. Just let it go right by you. Devil, you're a liar. I ain't catching whatever you're throwing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I've been... I've been given a spiritual immunization shot. I don't have to believe you. As a matter of fact, the Bible lets me know that you're a liar and the father of lies. And the truth is not in you. Encourage others. Let me tell you, I was in an exciting church school class on today. I want to encourage the facilitator on that Sister Ashley McCray, she did a good job. I was godly proud. I said, now, I cannot sit in my, the class where my son was and not sit in the seat where my daughter was. So I made, I, I pressed. <laughs> but I was blessed. Encourage others. Is there something encouraging you could say to somebody who's sitting right next to you? Just tell them you look nice today. <laughs> Encourage others. So examine your heart. Be authentic. Encourage us. And then the final point is, and read the word of God. Study the word of God. Let your light so shine, I'm finished, before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Does this light turn on? Yeah. Flip on the light. Because what does it do? It allows your, it says, they may see your good works and do what? And glorify your Father in heaven. Let me just do that. This little light of mine, therefore, 
I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. One more time, this little light of mine. Well, it's this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So sowing Jesus into situations produces good works that glorifies the Father. Jesus resides on the inside of you and I. We can sow or imitate Christ in various situations and circumstances, and as we do, people are looking at how it works. And then they'll say, how does it work? And they'll, you'll say, it's through Jesus. You've got to go to God on this thing. And then they'll glorify, Lord, we thank you that you have examples of how to have good success on this side of heaven. Thank you for correcting this problem. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for making a way. Thank you for helping me to become a believer. Thank you for helping me to become more committed. Thank you, God. Let's stand. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. From the bottom of my heart to the depths of my soul, yes, Lord, completely yes, my soul. As believers, we want to let our light shine. As we sow the seed of the light of Christ. Yes, and it works because God does not fail. And the principles of sowing and reaping apply. It brings glory to the Heavenly Father. As I engage in Jesus' name, it works out and it brings glory to the Father. I want to encourage those of us who are born again to sow light into situations. You don't have to go in and say, listen, I'm coming in in the name of Jesus. But you, in your actions, in your thinking, you do that. You don't have to go around with the Bible and beat people up with the Bible. Just be an imitation of the Bible through your life, through your testimony. And as you... Imitate Christ. Hallelujah. You're sowing into that situation, that circumstance, that home, that relationship. And as you sow into that, it works. It works. God cannot fail. His work, his word will work. And as it works, when people want to know how, how did it happen, you say, but by the grace of God, God is glorified. I want to encourage you to engage, sow the seeds of light. Let it work and bring glory to God. We're going to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those that are born again, that they engage in this work of the ministry. Help us, Father, to encourage others. Help us to read your word. Help us to be authentic. In the name of Jesus, that you might be glorified. Now, now, Lord, I pray for those who are outside of the ark of safety, that they not be comfortable or content being there. If there's anyone, whether in virtual audience or sanctuary, that is not born again, I pray, Father, that they would right now agree with the word of God that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Right now, I pray that they would agree that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. And I pray that they would agree with the Holy Spirit and embrace Jesus 
as Lord and Savior, and therefore, therefore be saved. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Thank you for joining our broadcast today. For additional information, please visit us on our website, our Facebook page, or Twitter.